Got to close that. Too many windows to close. Well, We're just so you know, that was that was me harmonizing with myself a bunch of times. Good Sounds job. pretty good. Playing that over and over again. That well, was yeah, live. So it's, it's me. Yeah, it's me. I can do that. Sounds I, I can. I like. I split my vocal cords in a way that I could sound like uh, four different voices at once. It's nice. not easy. It's not Impressive. easy. It took train. Listen, I did go to college for voice. I mean, Miniature. Mrs. Dick, Mrs. Dick didn't teach me stuff for nothing. <laughs> All right, we're here. We're late. Sorry, I was trying to be on time, but apparently we had to have uh, we should have had a pre-show meeting because we had a bunch of stuff to talk about before we got going. So here we are. Welcome in Friday night. We have some ideas, some exciting news. Um, some of you may be feeling in a negative spot and want to bring us to negative town. Maybe even someone on this show. I was trying to move on. I was trying to move to a better place because there's so many slammers out there. There's so many people that don't know what's going on and speculating. I didn't want to see, seem like a moron, like all these other people who've been sheftered. I didn't want to be sheftered anymore. And, um, I just wanted to do deal with what I know. And I also wanted to give some uh, some cool announcements about different things happening in the world, including including how you can help Hayfman Bros monetize this show. So some people have called this show a vlog. Some people have called it a podcast. It's not really any of that. It's a show. It's a show that's just brought to you by YouTube through Hayfman Bros to YouTube. But... I went to look at some statistics. We get monthly statistics, right? And some other things. And you can look that up as the creator. And one thing that was, uh, I was, I knew a long time ago, I looked at this and I was like, man, we're never going to get there. We're never, we're not even going to be close. There's two main metrics you got to hit, right? One is, one is you have to get 1000 subscribers. Now we picked up a couple, but we're not there yet. <laughs> we're a little, we need some help in that department. The other metric is within a 12 month period, you have to have 4,000 hours watched. And we are at about 3,300 hours of content from Hayfen Bros actually watched, not just, you know, those quick short, this adds up all the time. This is total time that people actually spend out of their days watching your program. So 3,300 plus hours so far in a 12 month period. So that's doable, right? That one we can handle. We can get there. The subscribers, we need to make a campaign. So if you're out there, you like this show, I'm going to do what all these people tell you to do. And right at the beginning of their videos or early on their videos, you got to subscribe. You got to subscribe. We need you to subscribe. Smash that subscribe button. Hit the subscribe. So, so help us out a little bit. Let's see if we can get a little subscribe action rolling forward. First, we'll get over the century mark and then we'll work our way uh whatever we got to do ben's already professed he'll do anything you know name your antic and he'll do it to get us to 1000 so he can make a little coin coming back to him from hafen bro so anyway that's the case that's no, what we need from I you won't do that subscribers we need you to subscribe if you haven't yet and we need you to tell somebody tell some other people about it and encourage them to subscribe if they don't want to watch our show that's okay because we'll get there we're pretty close in the, the amount of time watched but if they just want to subscribe, that's what we need, man. That's what we need. So calling out for you to help us out. Get there. Monetization. We need 1,000 subscribers. Let's do it. By the end of this year. Or how about before the Packers start their season? Because training camp. Ben, I'm going to training camp this year. Are you going to come with me? Uh, Sure. Not the whole training camp, but like a couple of practices. You know what I mean? A couple of public practices because I want to get this 
this signed. I got to get this signed. I'm telling Luke, you, if, if I, Lukey Patrick saw somebody with a Lukey Patrick jersey, he would sign it. He I know. Me. He's even probably if never he's seen not, anybody wear one before. Even if he's not doing autographs that day, I would flag him down. I'd be like, hey, I'd jump up and down. And he would probably run off, run over there. I'd bring my own Sharpie. He'd be like, please sign this, man. Especially oh if you God. your belly out, you know, and make you look more like Lukey Patrick. I think he would be all over. You know, he's so it. awesome. Yeah. I would be the only one probably at the practice with this jersey. So I would stand out. My man would see me. We'd like connect, we'd lock eyes. I'd turn around, point to the name on the back. He'd come running over, squiggle his name on there, number 62. And then I can frame this thing and put it in a hyperbaric chamber where it can never deteriorate ever. Airlock chamber. So it's preserved for all time to be passed down from generation to generation to generation of Jason Hapen family line. Lucas Patrick, number one backer of all time in my estimation. Well, I'm going to get, I want to get a Ty Summers jersey then and do the same thing. Well, then do it. That's all you got to do. You got to do it, man. Just got to go and, uh, you know, head over to NFL.com or whatever it is and say, I want a jersey. Let me That's check all you have to do is just say I want a jersey and they'll give it to me. Well, you got to pay a bunch of money, but yeah, you, they'll oh, give it to you. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm catching up now. Getting back my uh, windows back. Hey, here we are. Bernard's around. Rick's around. How you doing? Um, let's see. I also I have a new thing too. I want to try to keep up with the chat better. So I apologize. Sometimes we do a lot of the screen shares and other stuff. We go on things. We can't monitor the chat so great, but we're going to try to do a better job of that. I will try to do a better job of that. And Ben might help out a little bit. Bruce is here tonight. Bruce, how you doing? Sorry, we didn't get to that yet. No, oh, yeah. you know, you had things to talk about, man. Appreciate, Dude. Appreciate being on the show as always. Th thousands of subscribers. Bruce will help us get there too. If he says something outlandish tonight, apparently you can say anything you want. And you don't have to have any proof or any sources, and that's fine. You just say it, and you know, there it is. I want to give you the floor, Jason, for a second, because okay. I'm going to ask you a question, then I want you to answer the question. Okay. I don't know what's happened in 20 years, or 20-plus years, I guess, but I know for a fact that you and I were in a few courses together. Well, one, one together and one separately at different times. And one of the, the class we were in together, I didn't last the whole class. I just kind of dropped out and just stopped going. But one of the classes was called mass media law. And the other one was called mass media ethics. And I'm not sure if a certain reporter who shall be unnamed Adam Schefter uh, went to that course. I think he missed out on the mass media ethics course. Because from where I came from, and I, I took the class, because I was an advertising minor, I thought I had some fedangled idea. I was going to mix my music major with an advertising minor and, and be a jingle writer, and I thought I had to do that to, to make that happen. That was dumb. You can just make jingles. You don't have to actually go through all that, just so everybody knows. Anyways, so I had to take all these media classes, and you, Jason, were an actual media person. Like That was your major, was you know reporting and stuff. And we had these courses. So my question to you is, did Adam Schefter violate the number one rule in mass media ethics? Did he? I can't really remember. I'm wondering if you remember. Uh, Jesus. You know, I don't understand what's happening. I don't understand how you could come out and say that the way he said it too, <laughs> like it was actual report. There, it is, there has been reported that blah, blah, blah. And then uh, say what he said yesterday. It, just, it That is there's zero journalistic integrity then for the person who's supposed to be on this major primary network that a lot of people go to as a source for news. And I understand that, you know, with sports talk shows and other things happening, there's a lot of opinions, a lot of speculation, a lot of things to talk about. And that's kind of, so that's not, those aren't necessarily, of course, news shows. Those are debates and different things like that about different topics. So there's definitely kind of melded 
area and there these networks have taken on more opinion based shows and stuff. But when you're reporting something or breaking some news or piece of news, then you would think you would uphold the integrity that goes along with reporting what should be said news. Uh, but that didn't appear to be the case. As Adam Schefter said yesterday, uh, it was just an accumulation of things he had observed for a while now, for months and months. And then he went on and also said that didn't it sound like Aaron Rodgers in his post-game press conference after the NFC championship game where they lost again in heartbreaking fashion. And he was at a long season and all this sort of stuff he had gone through. Didn't it sound like he was saying his goodbye to green Bay in that. And I'm like, it just kind of sounded like a dude who was tired and mad, you know, sad that they lost and that the journey ended. And that's what it sounded like to me. It didn't sound like a guy who's saying goodbye to green Bay forever, but you know, okay. And apparently that was his starting off point for his, his intuition and, and thought process that this was what was happening. And then he said, you know, very broadly, it was almost a week that didn't go by since then that I didn't hear something about Rogers. And I'm like, well, okay. Is that from like other media outlets or Colin Cowherd or like, who are all these people every single week that you're hearing something about Rogers from like name who that is. Is it, is it, and if people in the NFL community, was it people within the Packers organization? Like, what, what is it, man? There was no one. I, That's what he told Dan Patrick. <laughs> Dan Patrick, like, so went, weird. went over it two, three times. He double cross examined him and said, hey, all right, so you're telling me that there was no source? And, right. and Schefter got all defensive. Like, he was, I'm telling you, Dan, there's no source. And he's drinking his coffee. He's a lot of coffee he was drinking. He was super defensive. All I know is this. I work for the TV station in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And we did a story. Or we were going to do a story. There was a cheese factory that had burned down in a fire. Okay. That cheese factory was recently purchased from its previous owner. The previous owner had an E. coli uh, breakout. But this was a new regime. Okay. And it, they had tried to get the business back up again with a whole new um ownership and all that kind of stuff. And we had to go there. I was just the camera guy. I was not the reporter. The reporter was a girl who actually now is head honcho in Madison, Jessica Leshevsky. Uh, you know, plug to you, lady. But anyways, we were on the story. We had to go to the story. We had to get the interviews. I had to get a bunch of awesome video. I got video of the place burned. I mean, I was right there. Okay. Getting a whole bunch of crazy video. We interviewed the guy. He was sad. It was sucked. I mean, he just had his whole place burned down of his business. It stinks. And after, and then he said, can you just not say anything in your report about the E. coli? Because that was the previous owner. That was quite a few years ago. And like, it's just, we're trying to get past, or like we're trying to rebuild this thing for under, for me. And if you mention that, it just is going to hurt us. It's, it's, it's a different owner, different whole thing. Right. And Jessica said, and, and Jessica, you know, she was like, yeah, you know, we're, we won't do that. Or she asked me about it. I was like, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I guess we, you know, I don't know. What do I know? We, she was really young. It was her first year on the job. And I didn't even, I didn't go to college. Like I said, I went to college for music. I didn't go to college for journalism. I didn't know. I paid attention sort of in, in mass media ethics, but not that much. Man, why, why would that matter to me? But anyways, we get back from doing the story. I had all this great video on their property. Right. We had all this great interviews with him talking about his business, how much it mattered, how much all these things mattered. Right. We get back and the head honcho guy at the TV station said, um, or maybe not the head honcho guy, but the head honcho guy on the air, my favorite guy in the world. We all know who he was, Jason. We're not going to talk about that. He said, well, we can't, we can't, I can't go on the air and, and talk about the story without talking about the E. coli problem that, that happened five years ago with a different ownership. And Jessica's like, yeah, but I promised him we wouldn't talk about that. Plus, Ben went and got a bunch of video on their property. So, because of mass media ethics and the ethics category, we were not allowed because of what, what the head honcho, not, not the guy, the, the on-air guy, but the head of, what was his name? You, the guy who was the head of the whole thing. What do they call him, Jason? I can't remember what they called him. Which one? News director, John Hawkins? Yeah, news director. Yeah, yeah, news director guy. And he said, okay, 
I mean, Kreitlow says we got to go on the air and we got it. We got it's it's a story. We got to talk to e about the E. coli. It's in the history of the of the place. So because of that, we had to drop almost all of the video I got. Any video that I got on the property, we couldn't use because we promised this guy we wouldn't do the story, you know, or we would do the story and we wouldn't mention anything about the E. coli. But because we were going to talk about the E. coli, and based on mass media ethics. We were not allowed to use any video that I took on the premises, which means I had like three or four shots that we could actually use in the, in the thing. Not only that, we couldn't use his interview anymore because we promised him. And then the, and then the director said to Jessica, he was like, hey, you can't promise people this stuff. And she's like, well, he wasn't going to talk to me otherwise. Do you want me to get the story or not? And he's like, well, I want you to get the story and do your best, but you can't promise anything to anybody because we don't know what we're going to need and what we're going to use. You have to tell them, I can't promise you that. And if they give you an interview, fine. If they don't, then they don't. There's nothing we can do. And that was something she learned. That was something I learned. But what I'm trying to get to is this. That story went on the air. It had four shots because Kreitlow had to talk about the E. coli issue. We had an interview with the fire chief from the town. We didn't have the interview with the guy. And Jessica wasn't even able to do their story. Kreitlow just wrote his own thing up. Because all Jessica's story was about the whole guy. But they followed the rules of if we promise this, then we can't use the stuff that we got because of that rule. And what it goes back to is this. No reporter worth a pinch of salt, especially one with over 20 years of experience, is going to go break a story that he has not double-checked three or four times with sources. He's not going to just be like, Boy, this stuff adds up, and hey, whoppity floop flop, here you go. No. Schefter is a lion sack of crap. He got it from somebody, somewhere. Otherwise, why wouldn't anybody else talk about it? Everybody else knew about little thing, little whispers here and there, right? Everybody, from the guys on NFL Network to Trey Wingo to everybody else around the sun, but Schefter decides he's the guy who gets to plant the seed and blow up the bomb on, on Thursday which ruined everything for the Packers and for Aaron Rodgers. They could have fixed this in the background. Nobody would even freaking knew Jack squat. So either Schefter is a jerk, butt monkey, or for sure somebody told him something and said, hey, let it out there on draft day of all days. Like we did, they didn't need any more publicity on ESPN. You know what I'm saying? Apparently like they, they had, they, thought I mean, they, they had did. this the center of the universe. Everybody's watching ABC for the draft. Like there people, not more people are going to tune in just because of the Aaron Rodgers story. No, they're already too. People are tuned in. We're going to tune in. That's just the way it's going to be. So how does that guy let that information out without any sources? He's either a hack or somebody told him something. And which one is it? And now he's backtracking his story because probably <laughs> Probably whoever told them or, or something like that is said, hey, we don't want anything out that it was us, whether it was the cup, the, 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 the Packers, whether it was Rogers or his agent or whoever it was or some other guy or whoever that was, they probably got back to say, oh, no, no, this is not coming back to me or I'm never going to give you any more scoops. So now he's like, oh, no, it was just something I put together. I'm like a, you know, a scientist and I brewed it all together. I don't, whatever. Bull crap. <laughs> Bull crap. Isn't it, isn't it all a bunch of crap though? Like it, it's like all of this, so much of it, so much of the whole thing since then has all been speculation and just people, you know, jumping on certain things or saying this or putting this out or whatever, and just kind of fueling it and following it. And, and it's just, I don't know, but that part, you're right. It doesn't make, it doesn't add up the way he said it. Cause I went back and watched the way he delivered it on Thursday. And then I went and watched what he said yesterday. And I'm like, these things just don't add up. So why are you completely trying to discredit yourself? A person who's been doing this for that long. And you're right. It must just be to, you know, to rebuild, hopefully some sort of, I don't know. All I can say is maybe an ass covering here is basically what it is. But I mean, I was surprised Dan Patrick didn't laugh him off his right? show. I mean, it was, it was honestly Truly. a joke. Bruce, what be. did you think when you, heard what Schefter said. I mean, it's just this whole situation has been totally insane. And really, we know almost nothing. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you saw the reaction to Danny Patrick. I mean, um, speaking of that, 
Why, why do why does it, is it always Danny Patrick and Lukey Patrick and my son is Riley Patrick? What's the deal with that? Anyway. Um, hey, hey, so, you do not put Dan Patrick and Lucas, Lucas Patrick in the same <laughs> sentence. That is right. unfair to Lucas Patrick. That is unfair. Sorry, I, uh, a man of integrity and a man who's just yeah. a butt kisser. I went off on a little tangent there. Um, so hey, you're fine, okay. Bruce. Go ahead. <laughs> so you, you saw Dan Patrick's reaction. I mean, he was he was kind of you know dumbfounded on on how he was answering you know the question about sources and stuff like that and what he was how he put it together. So first of all, um, Schefter is kind of a, a no tail and ass on in my opinion. I mean, you know, he's He's always kind of been that way, but um, it doesn't really surprise me that he didn't really know what to say and, and that maybe he doesn't have a source. Maybe he does, obviously, like Ben said, but um, it, it, the, the thing, and I'm going to be a little devil's, devil's advocate here um, at this. The, the thing is, is usually when this stuff comes out, it's somewhere in the middle. So some of it's going to be true. Some of it's not. The thing that that gets me is some of it's got to be true to a certain extent because you had Murphy and you had Goody fly out to visit Rogers. You don't do that unless something's going on. You know, I mean, why do you need to fly out to California to see him? Why? I mean, you can, you know, that that stuff can be done, you know, somewhere else. And if it's just contract negotiations, you know, that doesn't need to happen. So obviously it's something was going on and that's the reason why they had to fly out there and, and talk to him in person. So whatever that rift is, and, and, you know, personally I have a theory on it, but um, it doesn't mean it's right. I mean, that's just, I don't have a source. You know, we, need more th- we need more theories, Bruce. We don't have <laughs> enough of them floating around out there right now. <laughs> yeah. just... But th- that's my opinion. So, I mean, I, again, I think Schefter is a kind of an idiot. Um, but at the same time, there's probably some truth to it to a certain extent, just because well, of I mean, it's, it was true, but what I'm saying is, yeah. I mean, what I'm saying is this, when he went on Dan Patrick's show and said that it was a, com- a combination of things he, you know, put to piece together, it's a bunch of crap. He got a, he got a source from something. Okay. Now maybe he told the source, Oh, I won't tell anybody. You know, kind of like like I just mentioned with Jessica, where she told the guy, oh, no, we won't mention that. But then when we got back to the place, we mentioned it. So he couldn't use the video and we couldn't use the interview. Right. So maybe that's his point. Maybe he told somebody, oh, no, I won't say nothing. And then he did. And now he can't say his source or I, who knows what it all is. I don't know. But the, the fact that he did it, like, I mean, nobody drops. I said this in a text in the text. Nobody drops a bomb like that who's been in, in, in that business for 20 some years without checking a source and then double checking another source to make sure that he's got it on the solid and knows exactly what's going on. Because if he would let that out and be wrong, it would just be like, it'd be the egg on the face. Like I said, for, you know, for Goody last week, egg on the face. If you're that, if you say, if you drop that bomb and it finds out that you're totally wrong, you look like a moron. You don't just piece something together and just say, oh, I mean, I could piece a bunch of things together and be like, oh, the sky is green. Hey, everybody, the sky is green, everybody. You know why? Because the trees are green. And then I looked up right after it and I was still seeing flashes of green. So the sky is green. I don't know. I'm just making dumb crap up. But what I'm saying is it's stupid <laughs> on more than one occasion with this guy. And now we got all deal with this crap. When mm-hmm. I think they could have figured it out in the back end, one way or another, whether it was. Like, I would just rather not know Jack Squat, not have anything come out, and just live my life as a happy Packer fan, and then one day find out, hey, Aaron Rodgers just got a, a six-year extension. He's going to be, you know, on the team for six more years because they can't get rid of him no matter what they do because he's guaranteed money for six more years, blah, blah, blah. Okay, sweet. We got Aaron Rodgers for six more years. Let's go for it. Until he till he's retires, he's going to be Packer forever. He's happy. We're happy. Everybody's happy. Or one day I wake up, Aaron Rodgers got traded to the Broncos. What the crap? What happened? Why is that happening? What's going on here? Holy mother of God. And everybody freaks out. But at least we don't have months of us going, oh, my God, what's going to happen? Is he, should he be going? Why is he going to go? And nobody talks to you know, and, and Rogers doesn't come out and say anything. You got, like Jason said, you got AJ, you got freaking Jones, you got John Kuhn coming out. You got all these people, you know, he talks to, 
Mike Tirico, but he won't go on the air and talk to Mike Tirico. So Mike Tirico is on the air talking like he's talked to him, but we haven't heard him talk to him. We don't know Jack Squat. And it's a big freaking mess. And I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to worry about it. I just want to be a Packer fan and be happy. So here's my other question for both of you guys. Because I think this comes down to two things. What I did, the two things I just said, either they're going to trade Aaron Rodgers because he wants to go and that would be the nice thing for him. If he's upset and he wants to get traded, he wants to get traded <laughs> or they give him the extension and they give him a six year gear. Or, 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 I, don't, I don't know. If, I think it might be wrong, but I, I swear when Favre was at the end of his career, they gave him like a lifetime contract where it was like he was always going to be around like somewhere in the top five of all quarterbacks being paid forever. Whenever somebody got more money, his contract would go up to meet the, you know, ha- be in the average of the top five. I could be wrong about that, but it was like until he wanted to retire, they just gave that to him. And Rogers knows this because he was you know, on the team when Rob Favre was still here. And Favre got that treatment and Rogers gets the boot. Or the, oh, sorry, we will have you on the contract for one more year, but maybe next year, see ya. So here's my two, que- my, my two questions. Number one, would you, would you guys be, you know, would you be okay with the Packers extending him, giving him guaranteed money for six, seven years, however long it takes for him to sign it, and then maybe he deteriorates after two, three years? Okay. Or part number two, because... The Packers obviously want to move on from after this next year. Instead of having him come back and be a lame duck quarterback, trying to go for the big one one last time with everybody, which would be nice for the fans. Maybe instead trade Rodgers now while he's the MVP. He's got the most value you could possibly get. He gets away on his own terms and he's happy. And then we get players of picks and whatever. Which one do you want to see happen? Jason, which one do you want to see happen? Rogers stays for six more or seven more years. He's guaranteed money. He's the guy. The Jordan Love pick ends up being he's just the backup. And then, you know, they don't take up his fifth-year option, and they let him go, and they draft another guy. Or we trade Rogers. We get as much as we can for him now because guess what? If we don't do that stuff, they might try to get rid of him next year anyway. At least this year, you give Rogers what he wants, and he gets a chance to get out on his own terms. Which one do you want? As a Aaron Rodgers fan, because you're a huge Aaron Rodgers fan, because I think both ways will make Aaron Rodgers happy. But I think only one way makes the Packer fans happy, Mo- the majority of Packer fans happy. And I think only one way makes the front office happy. But I think both ways make Aaron Rodgers happy. But I think what would make Aaron Rodgers not happy is having him stick around for one more year, and then they ship him out of town after next year. So which one would you rather have stays for seven, eight years contract extension or he's out of town. We get a bunch of stuff for him. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, I watched Andy Herman's back a day podcast today because he went over five trade scenarios with different teams or something like that. And, you know, some of them were long shots and whatever, uh, a couple of, Two were interesting. One was the the one that everybody talks about with Denver. Um, because the, the key point right now is that everybody knows that the Packers have shown that they do not believe Jordan Love can play or is ready to play or maybe. Okay, he, we're whatever. not talking about Jordan Love. No, but we're I know. Gonna, but we're I'm, not cutting on Jordan Love. I'm, I'm just saying Rogers, they need so to get you, court- I don't want to hear about Jordan Love cutting on Jordan Love. You I'm always got to do that, and then you get mad at me. When I'm I cut not on Rogers, cutting on Jordan. Every Love. time, well, I'm apparently, ex- Jordan, they all think Jordan Love can't play. Obviously, Jordan no, no, Love no. Can't play. I'm explaining. That was like Aaron Rod. You just Aaron Rodgered it. You just went and did a little. Oops, 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 no, whoop, I'm yep, explaining yeah, that yeah, they need to get a don't quarterback. Don't have to cut on Jordan Love. They, they nice need to Jordan get a Love. quarterback that can start. That's what Andy Herman was talking about too. You got to have a guy. Trade a six round pick for Gardner Minshew then in a trade, and Gardner Minshew is one of the guys that he talked about. Yeah, I'll take Possibly him. Get. You can't throw in the wind, but I'll take him. Any the other, other one was uh, doing a trade with Cleveland and getting Baker Mayfield. I don't know. Baker Mayfield's. Hmm. He was apparently after week six, he ended up being like the eighth best quarterback, according to pro football focus last year. And after week six, he was like one of the top five quarterbacks in the whole league last year. I'll say this. I don't think Baker, Baker Mayfield would hesitate 
as being like coming in after Aaron Rodgers, like because he's got he's so cocky, he's just like I don't care, whatever. Yeah. That's the other thing he said too. That's, that's the only thing I would say about him. But I, I don't really like Baker Mayfield as a person. Maybe a quarterback, wow. okay. No, but he I mean, if run. you're going from Aaron Rodgers, who's a like solid citizen, awesome guy, to Baker Mayfield, who's kind of a questionable citizen, I mean, I don't know. Well, whatever. I mean, he can run the offense, right? He's mobile enough. He's better thrown on the, you know, off play action and with a little more space anyway because he's shorter. So that that's interesting. The one thing I told you, the Packers need Aaron Rodgers because they didn't do what they should have done in the draft, which is if they had drafted, uh, if they had drafted the center, your guy, Lance Dickerson, Landon, yeah, Landon, dang it. Landon Dickerson. Now I'm turning to you and getting the name. Answer wrong. my question. And I am answering you your question. Do you want Aaron Rodgers for this. seven more years, or do you want to trade Aaron Rodgers in June 2nd? Which the, one do you want? If the Packers had drafted Dickerson and then Miners and could just run the heck out of the ball, because if they got those two guys in their offensive line to add to the offensive line, just run the heck out of the ball, then you could trade Rodgers and you'd be fine because you just turn into a running team. But they did not do that. So now they need Rodgers. So by default, we need Rodgers to stay for whatever. So that's what I need. I got to have Rodgers for as long as you can have him. And that, that's not a bad move. Bruce, what do you say? Trade him. Um, I love Rodgers too. And um, in my opinion, and I know people don't you know, think this is true, I think he's the best I've ever seen. And, and that's just my opinion. But it's time. It's time to to let him go, and the reason why is kind of what you stated, Ben, a little bit. Um, he's going to be happy no matter what what happens. But I think for the locker room's sake, with with what's happened, and I think um, for the Packers itself, I think, um, like you said, his value is the highest it, it's been or will be. And we, we need to do it now because if you keep him another year and then all of a sudden, you know, you release him or you trade him at that time, you're going to get nothing for him. And the other thing is he knows it's only a year that he's going to possibly be here. It, it's the season's not going to be, he's not going to give 110%. I just don't believe that. Even though, you know, you want to believe that Aaron Rodgers is going to do that. I, I just, it's going to be in the back of his mind. And I, I just don't think that's a good thing. So, um, as much as I, I would want him to stay here, I just think it's time to to move on. We need to see what the Packers can do without Aaron Rodgers and how we can build a team um, around whoever, you know, whatever quarterback we get. Um, obviously, I think Love is not going to be that guy, but, you know, maybe I'm wrong, maybe maybe not. But ultimately, um, you know, we, we need to, to, to start building um, a defense and then we need to, you know, obviously utilize Aaron Jones because Aaron Jones is that guy now uh, if Rodgers goes. I mean, we're building around Aaron Jones at this point. Um, Yeah, you have to find a quarterback, but ultimately Aaron Jones is going to be the star of of that offense once Aaron uh, Rodgers leaves. So that's my opinion. It's time to time to go and time to move on. So here's my thing real quick. I know I've been talking a lot and then I know Jason, you got a bunch of stuff planned. I just wanted to get into this Schefter stuff. And then into my my thoughts on the Aaron Rodgers thing. When it comes to him being signed for a bunch, like if they extend him, I think that would be great for Packer fans. I think that would be great for Aaron Rodgers. I don't think it would be great for the team. Because of money and trying to keep build things around Aaron Rodgers at that high salary, we've seen it. It's just this past year. They've had to restructure everybody under the sun just to get under the cap again. But here's the other problem with that. Aaron Rodgers may be happy because he's going to retire as a Packer. But a lot of these guys that they pushed over to the next year's contract by restructuring them are going to be gone next year. And the team's going to be in rebuilding mode probably next year. I don't know how they can possibly keep doing like pushing it and pushing it and pushing it with all these, you know, top veteran players. So he may end up miserable anyways. And they may end up having to trade him anyways. And I, I just think I like I said in the past, I personally want to see this team run through Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon in the Matt LaFleur system and see if that can work. The defense needs to get better for that to work. And they, if they trade Rogers, I would rather have him trade him for good players, not necessarily draft picks. 
because I think good young players are going to help the team more than draft picks that Goody may draft Eric Stokes in the first round. And we are like, why did he he's going to get in the third round? And I'd rather have like a Jerry Judy. And we know he's going to be a good receiver or whatever, you know, or Patrick Sertain or whoever, you know, or like Baker Mayfield, fine, whatever. We get a guy that we actually know can play in the NFL instead of some draft pick that could end up being Derek Sherrod. So I agree with Bruce, but part of me also wants to, I mean, the thing about Aaron Rodgers is he's always said he wants to retire as a Packer. He went through the whole thing. He watched Favre go through all that and he really wanted to stay. He really wanted to stay as of even less, just this off season. Before this happened, like his last interview with Pat McAfee, I watched it again today, right after the Tampa Bay game. And as sad as he was, and, as, and I, well, he wasn't sad during that interview, but he mentioned it again. I was like, you know, I, I mean, I, I want to stay. Who wouldn't want to stay? Who want, would want, wouldn't want want to be Derek Jeter or whoever? But I think eventually when the team goes down and he's, and he's mentioned how he's seen all these guys leave, every year when more guys leave, you become less and less part of the team. And the reason why I know this, because I went to college for eight and a half years, which sounds terrible, but I did. And I wasn't, I wasn't a doctor, but I was in the singing statesman, which was the all male choir. And I was in singing statesman for six years. And Eckes knows this. He was in there for seven years, even longer than me. Good God, Eckes. But as it went on, there's guys that I've met after being out of statesman who are like, Hey Ben, how's it going? And they were in statesman like my last year. And I don't even remember those guys because they were so much, they were like, 18, 19 years old, and I was 24. Like, I couldn't even relate to him anymore. And I think Rodgers is going through that same sort of thing. And sometimes by him going to another team, he starts the entire process with all new guys. And it's like an all-new team for him. So it's a weird situation, and the Packers need to figure it out. They need to know, okay, you know what? If we're If our plan is to trade him after this year anyways – Let's do Aaron Rodgers a solid and give him a chance to go where he wants now. And then we can possibly get what we need to build for the future. Take it away, Jason. It's your team. Your show. You got a bunch of stuff to do. I just uh, one, well, two quick follow-ups. One, that's one of the reasons based on where everything was at. Um, I don't understand why the Packers multiple times had to come out so adamantly and be like, we're not trading Aaron Rodgers. We're not trading Aaron Rodgers. Why would you say that? Just say, look, it's a situation we're working through. You don't have to say that. You don't have to make that statement. Because, I mean, unless you really mean it, I guess. But why? Why would you close yourself off to that option? Because, one, the Packers love picks. And, two, you know, some of these potential trade ideas could work out. Like Herman laid this one out with Carolina where the Packers could get Jeremy Chin. And also maybe they get Sam Darnold and three first round picks and Sam Darnold isn't great, but you know, you could plug him in to at least start while love you figure out if he can play or not. Um, and then other ones like, you know, with Denver, I mean, if, if they, if they move Stokes and get Sertan back um, and then some other good young players and a receiver, which you know, they needed a young receiver who's actually good and some picks. I mean, you have, why would you, you have to consider that you can't, just be like, we're not trading them. We're not trading. Well, I don't know why they publicly well, say the that reason why they times. say that is because they don't want the Packer fans to revolt on them before anything even happens. You know what I'm well, saying? I still, I still don't like it. I still wish they would the, just the other, the other issue, not address the, it that the, way. The other thing is this Devonte Adams. I, I don't think they're going to assign him to an extension. I think he's going to be out after next year too. And he should really be part of the trade. It should be Aaron Rodgers and Devonte Adams combo pack. He goes with his best buddy. They go the to some Raiders. other team, and then we get whatever comes back. And then that, that's the only way to make it work, in my opinion, because you think Devontae Adams is going to want to hang around on a lame duck contract when they know he's not going to be signed back with Jordan Love throwing him the ball or whoever? No, he ain't going to want to be part of that crap. And he's just going to be crabby and complaining all the time. So trade them both or keep them both. If you extend them both, you can save some money. The sign more guys this year and then go for a run. I mean, you gotta, they gotta do one or the freaking other. There's no, like, the, I don't want them to try to make a run now with a team that we know isn't good enough to win the Super Bowl. They think it is. It's not. We know that. It's proved it over the last two years. They get to the NFC Championship game and they get blown out or they, they get stuffed by a good defense or whatever it is. And we've seen it twice. So they either need to trade, move on, start anew. Or 
extend and upgrade some players with, 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 you know, somehow trading or whatever, uh, and by restructuring to get more money for this year, then make a run, but they can't make a run with Aaron Rodgers and Devonte Adams on lame duck, con- lame duck type contracts, period. Hey, Blas showed up and, uh, Hey Blas, good morning. He said, are we still talking about this? It's a non-topic for me. It was blown out of proportion. And it was like all the, all the stuff that continued on all the stories, all the speculative stories that followed, um, you know, 80% of them or so aren't true or even in any factual basis, but you know, so anyway, we did, but there is something here. There's an issue and we're talking about because, because it's a possibility, but it is a possibility, right? The only thing I will say, only thing I will point out is if the Packers accept any picks in return, they have to make sure that they're 2023 picks and not 2022 picks because Goody only drafts good in the odd number of years. He's proven that, right? So all I know is I've been double, you know, I think what happened 2018, on, uh, 2020, no, 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 bad 2019, good 2021, good. So what happened, we don't want what to happened, be 2022s. Dude. We when we were going over the draft on Sunday, we we had the Amari Rogers and we kind of said, and then they also drafted a defensive tackle. So we were like, they finally drafted a defensive tackle to help Kenny Clark. We don't even know if he's any good, but we're oh, so we gave him a good grade for that. He drafted Amari Rogers, like, oh, we finally got a slot receiver. We don't know if he's any good, but we finally did that. And, and just because of those two moves, we gave Goody a good draft. I've I've listened to a bunch of draft experts over the last week here. They gave Goody like C minus. Uh B minus D. I think this so, draft cast, they think this draft class will be fine. You know, I don't know, I, man. I like a Cole Van Landen getting him late. I think he could be a guy that competes. I think he's already better than Billy Turner, just like any cornerback they bring in, like the guy from uh G- I know that. Charles is better but than Kevin King already, so we're good. Who are they gonna play, Jason? Are they gonna play that guy? Are they gonna play Billy Turner? Because if they play Billy Turner, it's gonna be the same crap as last year. Well, exactly. And Aaron Rodgers is gonna be running for his life and it's over because Coach he's gonna get gotta, smacked in two seconds. Coach has gotta step up and see, you know, view the tape objectively and put the best guys in. Um, I did have one other thing to finalize. And since we heard Belaz, you, you, you've seen the discrediting of the story, the Adam Schefter news and all this stuff and whatever. And what he said, totally discrediting himself. If we don't understand it, I believe his sources because you know, right. There's this quarterbacks club, right? There's this quarterbacks club, quarterbacks, talk to quarterbacks. Uh, don't say it. I'm going to say it. Cause it's probably, it's my, I'm, this is my theory. I'm You're going to be Adam Schefter. That's fine. That's you fine. have a source telling you this. I have no source, but I can say it. And you say went it to like journalism school. You're gonna you're gonna discredit your own self now if you say this. It's my speculation <laughs> that that Aaron Rodgers looked at the situation, saw how Tom Brady got out of it, talked to him about his situation, gave him some details, and said, "Hey, we're buddies, right? We're buddies. We're in the quarterbacks club and pals, and this is just you know keep it quiet." And maybe Brady wasn't the one that leaked it directly, but maybe he told the good old Bruce Arians and you know, that guy, you know what I think about that guy. So maybe good old Bruce turned it around and said, you know what? Those Packers, they signed Aaron Jones back. If Aaron Rodgers comes back and he's doing well, and some of these other guys are better and they, you know, they filled some holes. And if some of these other guys, they drafted work out, they might beat us this year. What can I do? Theory. <laughs> oh, Tommy told me some info. Adam. It's the thought. You know how cutthroat that guy is. I wouldn't put, put it past Brady either, but I go more on the Aryan side of uh, anything. Is that that? So I broke your, uh, sorry. I broke your theory, Bruce. Sorry. That's probably what it was. Hey, I got some good news. Transitioning out of that, that was just a, mostly for comical stuff. But I do think the Packers would kick their butt this year. All this crap wasn't going on, and they're bringing Aaron Rodgers back normally and all that stuff. My dream job, Nicole sent me a text last night and told me that my dream job is finally, for the first time in my professional life, going to be available, possibly. So if anybody watch, has ever watched like regional or local broadcast of the Milwaukee Bucks, the TV broadcast, it was always Jim Paschke, right? I think he started in 82 or 83. And I was going in, I was coming out of school. 
I was a journalism major. I started doing radio. I started doing play by play. I really realized that even though I love football, I love basketball more and I'm better at basketball play by play than I am football play by play. And I created all my lists of my own catchphrases and all this sort of stuff. Some of them dunk took the off donut. He dunked the donut. Some of them took off. No, that was just a side story. Uh, oh. Anyway, the point is the, the goal was I'm doing this stuff as a young broadcaster who had a dream. And the goal always was, could I get to one day be the Bucks announcer for the Milwaukee Bucks? And I'm working my way up and I'm getting better. And I was, you know, seven years doing play by play on the local circuit in Northwestern Wisconsin college and high school. And I watched Jim Paschke and I'm like, damn, I thought he was old like 10 years ago. He's still doing it. So, okay. Then I got to give up broadcasting for a while, do other things, have kids, have a family, do the other stuff, more security, need to make some more money. That's fine. Don't want to be gone all the time at nights when you got kids and stuff either. And your wife's no longer in school. So she's home more. So let's spend some more time with their family. So I give that up, shelve it for a while. Time goes on. Another 10 years. Paschke's still doing it. I'm like, damn it. When is this guy ever, ever going to retire? How old is he anyway? Well, apparently last night, he finally announced it, that this is his last season and he is ending as the Milwaukee Bucks television broadcaster at the end of this season. Now, they probably have somebody lined up, picked out, plucked out, they're just going to throw in there already. But 1% of my dream is still alive. So I'm going to call in some favors to people I know and say, hey, got any contacts? You know anything about this? Any way you can get my word, a word about me to them? And then I'll dust off my old, my old broadcast, basketball broadcast clips, send them to the Bucks, And by next season, maybe I don't have to do this show anymore because I'll be busy doing the freaking box TV. Let's go. Dreams alive. Maybe not. But anyway, it, Jim Paschke, actually, congratulations to him um, for being such a long time announcer of the Bucks, doing a fine job. I just wish you were retired like, 15 years ago. So I had a real shot at it, but you never know. Anyway, dreams alive. That's the big news. Nico sent that's, me a text. That's right the away. big news. Well, Nico sent me a text. He's you like, don't hey. have a chance. And he hell. just said, he just said, Paschke's retiring for a second. Time to work for the bucks. That's what he said. So that was well, my hey. goal. People hey. ask me like, what is your end? What is your goal? Where do you see yourself five years from now? That's what I said. That's weird because I said I'd be the Packers general manager. My goal may be in <laughs> sight too. That was and that was not one of the four positions listed on Indeed, by the way. It was oh. not the GM. The GM was not one of them when I got that alert. So just so you got a heads up. Well, hey, I got my fingers crossed. It might still happen. You never Fair. know if Rogers gets his way or apparently or supposedly or reportedly or whatever. Whatever. I got to say a couple of quick things. Listen, what this whole situation just to finalize on my end. What this whole situation pointed out, though, was that the Rodgers haters just loved it up and just jumped all over it and took off. But what it also showed and exposed was the fans that never really accepted him, that never really moved on to him from Favre, turned on him that quick on a bunch of speculative crap. So how quick were they to believe all the craziness? They were. Some of us were not quick to believe it, but I guarantee you a high majority of the people that were, were Favre lovers that had a really hard issue with the change. Probably some of them were the ones that threatened Roger's life, threatened his life, booed him, did all this other crap to him when he took over as a starter. That's just the sad part for me is that like, that's how his time started, you know, in green Bay. And this is how it's going to, and I, I just hate it. I just hate it. That's all I have to say about it. All right. We're moving on. What's the next uh, topic? All right. We have to talk about. We've been on for an hour now. And all we talked about was Aaron Rodgers and Jim Paschke. We got to talk about the draft picks. Anybody excited about any of the draft picks? Ben no. is less excited now. Bruce, how do you feel Bruce about might the draft be picks? Ex- what do you say, you? Bruce? Uh, you know. I, I don't mind the, the lineman picks. I, I actually think uh, might have found 
um, a couple of decent linemen. Um, so, so I was good with that. Um, you know, the, the D lineman in the fifth round, you know, he's a big dude. We'll see, but he, I mean, he's a fifth rounder for a reason. So the chances of he, that he's going to, you know, again, the offensive lineman, in my opinion, you can pick in later rounds and find diamonds in the rough, um, very, you know, pretty easily actually. But as far as uh, defensive linemen, eh, there's not a lot of defensive linemen that are in the late rounds that end up turning out. Okay. Uh, in my opinion. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. So I was kind of indifferent on that one. Um, I, I'm really hoping that Stokes is the guy, even though I think it was a reach. I, I'm hoping he's the guy. Um, I like the speed. I like that he's a little bit of a ball hawk from what I've seen um, in his college tapes. I just worry that he can't flip his hips, you know, um, and, and be able to, to run with those um, savvy receivers in the NFL. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. But um, I'm hoping that that's a decent pick as well. Um, if, I mean, if, if that happens, it ends up being a decent draft, you know, to be honest with you. Um, if the linemen, you know, turn out okay and Stokes turns out okay, it, it ends up being a, a decent draft. But it, if Stokes ends up junk, then really that draft doesn't do a whole lot for us. I mean, it really doesn't. Um, that number one pick really has to pan out. I mean, it really does. Because Kevin King sucks, as we know, and um, so no argument on this show he Bruce. sucks. He he does, <laughs> and there's still people that are, are saying, "Oh, he's okay." And I mean, on Facebook, it's like, "Dude, it's okay." I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that second, that high second round pick we passed on TJ Watt for, yeah, yeah he's okay. No, yeah, I, I I wanted to go off on him, but I didn't. That's I just good. I just let him talk and and you know voice their wrong opinions. But, um, but anyway, uh, I, I think the draft might be okay, but you know, obviously you're not going to see it in two years. It takes two years to figure it out if it's actually going to be a good draft or not. But, um, I was okay with the draft. I was okay with it, except I, I do think we could have went D line or linebacker in the first round and I would have been happier, but again, I'm not the GM. So if Stokes works out, then I was wrong. So, you know, Leah's Leah's saying he's a lot of people are comparing comparing Amari Rogers to Ty Montgomery, yep. and I disagree because oh, okay. from watching the film, Amari Rogers has got more agility, and he can shift his hips and move better. Ty Montgomery was pretty like beefy and buff. And he wasn't very like uh, his agility, not so much, you know, the ability to twist his body and make plays in the balls in the air. Not so much. I mean, that's why they move. Amari, he's more of a Cobb guy, I, I think. Well, he's like, yeah, I mean, he's Cobb and James Jones mixed together. That's what he is. And then, you know, which is not bad. I mean, those guys were great for us for years and years, like, you know, so, Hey, I'm not going to complain about that. I mean, Ty Montgomery was the fifth string wide receiver that they moved to half back when we had nobody. Right. And, and that's glorious what game was. against the bears and and one great game against the bears. And they thought, Oh yeah, we'll start him that next year. And oh, they realized, Oh back? crap, he sucks. <laughs> and then they drafted Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams and that other guy, whatever maze or whatever the hell his name was. He never made a team. And then we had good running backs for four years in a row because it, well, no, because McCarthy wouldn't play him, but still, you know, but whatever. I just think he's a little bit better. Well, I think he's a lot better than comparing to the time Montgomery. He's more. You know, the other, you know, the other thing, Ben, and sorry to interrupt. No, so you're good. You can't really compare him to Montgomery anyway, because he's a special teams guy too. He, he can actually um, return, you know, kicks and things like that. And, and Montgomery wasn't that guy. I mean, he really was. Oh, he, 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 he did return, return one one time. He returned one so uh, well that he got traded the next day or cut or whatever it was. <laughs> okay, but, but I mean, let's be honest. Uh, Amari is uh, Amari is somebody that uh, I think I think that's why they picked him as well because I think he could he can possibly fix the return game a little bit. Um, but then obviously he's a slot receiver for us as well, so he kind of uh, hopefully will kill two birds with one stone, you know. In that, that's I it. have I have one more bit of news on Amari Rogers. Uh, source told me. <clears throat> 
inside the Packers organization. Okay. That one of the reasons why Goody was so adamant about getting Rogers, Amari Rogers and drafting up so quickly was that uh, they're going to give him number 12 after they trade Aaron Rodgers, So all that back stock of jerseys and, and merchandise is still valid to sell. Do you watch our previous shows? I already said that like immediately after they drafted him. You said that? Yes. Immediately I got to start listening him, to you that. when you talk. I'm sorry. Number one, gotta... number two, they already gave him number eight. Where are you? Like, are you pay attention to pack? Aren't you a people could be a head honcho? People can Packers change show? numbers all the time. People can change numbers. I'm a government ever changed his number. He was 88. Remember, there's a whole big long thing about a Packer oh, fan. Oh, like, God. Gonna change his number? Is he going to change his number? Can he stay 80? Remember, that was a big long thing? Yeah. That was so dumb. Yeah, that was yeah. so dumb. Now it doesn't matter anymore. So who cares? Think about yeah, that. Yeah, you got me, you got me the sharing. Market. You got to give me I some sharing. You. I got you. Hey, one quick thing. Blas is a little snappy this morning. He must have oh. woke up on the wrong side of the bed. He's a little, little snippy, but that's all right. That's okay. We can. We get that like that sometimes. <clears throat> I'm trying to be more even keeled about the whole thing. I got too worked yeah, up over too. the draft weekend. It was and mom, I I Ben, I said it in that show, but mom did comment to me about too much hollering. So well, did you say anything about my F bomb I had? And speaking of mom, it's a good break in the show here before you get to your thing. Now, some people also said I said we were trying to be more serious and that uh not as much fart gun. There's been a fart gun absence for a while. We do have to say that Mother's Day is coming up. We all love our moms. Everybody that's still got one here on this earth, you should love them up, especially this weekend, and show them, you know, send them a text, call them, talk to them, video chat, send them a card. They like cards, whatever you got to do. Maybe even a gift, but love your moms up. But the ultimate love that can be shown to mom on our show is a true fart gun salute to all moms. So all moms, this is for you, including the big blast in a second. You just wait for it here. Any quick notes about moms, Bruce? Say anything to your mom? My my mom is um, the, she's the best mom in the world and She's she's taken care of me all my life, and if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be where I am now. So, love you, mom. You know, <laughs> that was perfect. Why, why did you go and have Bruce say such a lovely thing <laughs> when you knew that was going to be at the end? Why would you do that to him? That poor How guy. How did he time it out perfectly? I thought I was, it was the fart gun would interrupt him. That was beautiful, Bruce. That you know, was well I was done. tempted to I was tempted to lean a little bit while you did that. <laughs> I, I didn't. Seriously I, though, we love our mom. She's the best. We she, we comment all this time on the show about her, and you guys should all love your moms and give them show them some love this weekend for sure. Happy Mother's yeah. Day, all moms. All right, Ben, what do you got? Screen share. Here's a guy who loves his mom. Are you ready? I, I wanted to show some positive videos. All right, let's do it. This is a guy who, just remember, we got more than Aaron Rodgers on offense. Just remember that. Look at that. You see that? Happy birthday, Robert. Aww. That That is a three-year-old Robert Tunyon. There you go. Who lived in... Indiana or some crap, but he was still a Packer fan. Wow. Nice. Wearing Brett Favre jerseys, by the way, Jason, don't get mad. Yeah. It's, and he also got a shiner. Look right here. You can see he's got, he got one heck of a shiner on his eye. He must have fell down being rough necks. Hmm. Toughen him up. Favre was the guy at the time. You had to wear the Favre jerseys. I mean, unless you're me and you get a Patrick jersey, but. Robert Tunyon was destined to be a Packer, even from three years old. If that can't make you smile, I don't know what exactly can. So we need to sign him. He needs to sign his tender, his Agreed. second round tender. And then they need to extend his butt before he goes out and scores another 12, 13 touchdowns this year. And he's way too expensive for us to get. So there you go. That's my first share. I don't know. Is there other stuff you want to talk about, Jace? I'm checking my list here. Oh, no, it's off topic, though. Okay. Well, then hold on. I got one more thing. Now. Off topic. 
what's the topic? I remember just just saying random stuff. No, it's just a quick uh, side note to about uh, High Riser Twenty Two. Oh yeah. The other All thing, right. Ben. The other thing, Ben. Here, I will tell talk, you. Talk about Robert Tunyon. If we want to get any Packers on this show to talk to us, like Robert Tunyon or somebody else, or Lucas Patrick, my main man. Look at this stuff. Then we also need to uh, not be slamming on their bosses all the time and stuff like that. And we got to take a little bit more practical approach to the whole thing because they won't want to come on a show like this as an active player of the team and, um, you know, have us saying stuff like that other weeks and be like, yeah, I was on the hate from bros show and their teammates watch it. And like, those guys said some mean stuff about me. Dang it. Whatever. May have been warranted, maybe the truth, but still, we got to be nicer about it and be more. Uh, you're constructive. not going to get Billy Turner on the show. I mean, you know. No, but he might find out about it. Hopefully, it motivates him, but probably not. Robert Tunyon's. How bad all... are we going to be without Aaron Rodgers, though? I mean, Robert so... Tunyon was always good, though. Like, he, he just showed threw it. That right... Tunyon went up and grabbed it. What are you talking about? Anybody can make that throw. Anybody the, can make that throw. The thing, the thing about him. That's best. Is he just? He's got great hands. You need dudes that can catch that receiver. One hundred percent of his targets this year. No, he had one yes. drop. No, he, he didn't. Had... Yeah, he did. I saw it and I remember it. Huh. He didn't give him a drop for it. Yeah, fine, but he had one. I think I should be the official drops. This you know caretaker he, he keeper. Needs, he needs of to work on. League. Oh, sorry. He needs to work on breaking tackles. That's his only yeah. issue. Oh, yeah. He's he's not great after the catch, that's for sure. But he's fast while he's running without the ball. And yeah, he's, he can get catches behind everything. the defense. Yeah. Which is he's great. Awesome. He's the best Rogers damn needs to tight end we've had. A little bit. <laughs> if he would have had that one online, he wouldn't have had to dive for it. That's two in a row where he had to dive for it because Rogers couldn't throw it on the ball. Come he on, Rogers. Like 14 touchdowns if Rogers would have hit him in a couple of I minutes. know. And that one he had to wait. For, well, he was pretty good on that one. And then he fell down. See, that's his problem. He he just he falls down when he instead of he, as soon as somebody touches him, he just falls down. Right. As he's no no break tackles. He's got to work on that. Just like everybody, no break tackles in this team, except for the new guy, Amari Rogers. Maybe he can break some tackles. But nobody else breaks tackles in the receiving court. Or tight I mean, end. This group. is yeah, this is a top five uh, tight end, everybody. Top five tight end in the NFL right now. And he's a Packer. Think about that. And should have made the Pro Bowl. Yeah. He, now he, Aaron Rodgers throwing the ball that helps him. No, no doubt. So, I mean, he's the only one we didn't spend, uh, you know, high pick on or whatever else too. We didn't spend any pick on him. I know. We got two third rounders, but they're not as good as this dude. Here's Lukey Patrick. Oh, look at <laughs> yes. <laughs> Best damn Packer there ever was. Man, a lot of crossing routes. Those are easy too. They don't even have to really run sharp routes. They just got to keep going. You just got to continue yep. on until you get through the defense and you're well, open. Rogers sometimes has to buy time by backing up, backing up, backing up, running around, that kind of stuff. But I mean, that's. Hey, there's that chin guy. Anyway. A lot of crossers. Look at that. Crosser, crosser, crosser. But Tunyon was like, what the heck? I remember looking up his. Uh, his metrics, I think he, what did he run? Like a four, five, four, five, just nine, o- just over a four, five or something. What was his RAS score? Uh, Probably really that. high. He was not invited to the combine. Right. His numbers were at his pro day. But he just, I mean, 250 and six, four, six, five, 250 catches everything. Give me that dude. I'll take him. How does he get that wide open in the end zone? I don't know. Because teams are dumb sometimes. They don't pay attention. I, I, I just thought that'd be a couple, you know, a nice little Robert Tunyon, just looking at some Robert Tunyon, being happy about Robert Tunyon kind of stuff. What else you got, well, Chase? You got I, guess, uh, I guess pointed out that Kumaro broke tackles. That's true. Kumaro could break tackles. Yep, he was the only receiver who could. And then Goody let him go right Shit. after Rogers said he liked them. Yep. <laughs> could have been part of the issue. That was a big deal for Kumaro this week, though, and that when they somebody brought out that as a uh, oh, one yeah. of the issues, they got more some more. Kumaro got as much uh, airtime as he's gotten probably in his whole life. That was like a hundred times more airtime he's ever gotten his whole <laughs> life. What are you talking about? Saw all the Kumaro highlights on the show. 
Get Kumaro. He's not a Packer anymore. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's a Bill. It's true. I don't know. Maybe he'll bring Micah Hyde with him. Your best Woo-hoo! buddy. <laughs> don't get Jason excited. And the problem is, I switched phones, and the, he his contact didn't transfer over to my new phone. Oh, that's what happened. And that's why I lost touch that's with Micah, and now I don't have his number anymore. Otherwise, I could just shoot him a quick text, and he'd jump on with us, you guys. That's also from a source. Oh, Ben, MVS was also the 2018 draft. Remember, you couldn't remember any other Packer yeah, players right. in the 18 draft? MVS. Yeah, we also got this guy on our team. He uh, tied with Tyree Kill with the uh, most uh, receiving touchdowns over 40 yards in the NFL last season, just so you know. He also was the most yards per catch in the NFL last season, just so everybody knows. But uh, he's not any good. We need, we need, remember all, all last year off season, everybody kept saying how we had to get, we had to get somebody else, had to get somebody else. Yeah. He drops a couple of balls. He needs to fix that crap, but he is a dangerous weapon. He also needs to run roots better. Who cares? He just runs fast. And then he knows how to use officials right here. Thanks official. That was a, that was a pretty good cut. Pretty good move. <laughs> I mean, he's shown that like he, he actually breaks pretty well. It was so weird for him. There were games where you could tell, I don't know what it was, like he's just feeling more confident or, you know, whatever. But he he definitely, I think, plays based on how his confidence is that day. Because some games he looked awesome. and other games he just kind of, he'd make a mistake early and then just kind of disappear or not do anything. Well, there are some days where he didn't even get a target. Right. And then he just kept Why? And Devontae would get 15 targets and MBS got zero. And we almost lost the game. Hmm. That doesn't sound like a he very smart He made some move. good plays, though. And that and and, and this NFC game we champ- needed him. NFC Championship game, he was awesome. We would have lost this game without him, I can tell you that. Against the Jags. Why is that? I don't know. He's the, but, he's the difference maker on the offense. I, I mean, it's my mind. He changes the whole offense. He opens the field up for everybody else. He's got speed. Look at him. Catch and run. Catch and run. Nobody else catches or runs like him on this team. Lazard falls down. Lazard does fall down. Dang it. I love Lazard, but why does he have to fall down all the time? Hey, he broke a tackle. Holy. Now, it was one of those sandwich tackles where the guys kept him up by running into him yeah, at that, that opposite helps. sides. But Watch Devontae's block there. Good job, Devontae. Your guy made the tackle almost. I know I rip on Devontae. I'm sorry. Hey, that was my, will, that was that was another piece of news this week. Devontae's tweet, right? Oh boy. Which some people thought he meant was about Rogers, but it was probably actually about him. Probably about him. Yeah, I, <laughs> I think it was about him. Because everybody's all of a sudden like, oh, look at this. Devontae Adams chiming in on the Rogers situation. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's about him. But I think that was calculated by Adams. I think 